Hi there, are you looking for better health? You've come to the right channel. Welcome to my show. My name is Dr. Ngozi and I provide health content. This is not medical advice. Today, I'm going to talk about wellness dividends. Why is it important? What is it? What does it mean? And I think you'll learn a lot from this session. Wellness dividends. This means positive outcomes of the health action steps previously taken that add value to our health at a much later period in time. So why do we need wellness dividends? We need wellness dividends to prevent disease, to improve quality of life, to reduce illness, and reduce healthcare costs. So let's go over the definition of dividends as we know dividends. Sometimes you'll hear on the news or you'll read in the papers about dividends. So let's try to understand what dividends means. So dividends is a term, it's a financial term. And what it means is payments, typically payments that are made by a company to, a share, to its shareholders. So when you invest in a company, you're going to wait until their financial quarter when they have calculated their profits. And if you're lucky and that company has made money, you as a shareholder, because you own the shares or you own the stocks or you own the index funds or mutual funds or you're an investor, um, when the company has made profits, they choose to do different things with the profits. They can decide to reinvest the profit back into the company to grow the company, or they can decide to pay out the profits to the shareholders as dividends. And you as a shareholder, you can decide that you want the payout or you want your dividends to go back into the company and be reinvested. And that is what is called uh, compound interest. When your dividends grow and you get uh, twice what you invested or four times more than what you invested or more. So that is called uh, compound interest. So now we're going to apply this concept of dividends to our health and wellness. So wellness dividends, just like compound interest, they are benefits accrued to health in the long term based on preceding lifestyle decisions. So when you invest in a company, you're not going to get the profits immediately. You have to wait. Sometimes it can take a company five years to start to pay out profits. So likewise, when we talk about wellness dividends, these are changes that we're going to make that will impact our health for better in the long term. So let's go over some questions that we need to ask. When we talk about preceding lifestyle, what does that mean? It, it means preceding means before. So when you think about some changes that you've made in your um, health and wellness, your lifestyle decisions, what did you do before that has impacted your health in a good way? You may have decided you, you want to exercise more or you want to eat more fruits and vegetables. And so that decision, once you make it, you're not going to see immediate effects. It's going to take some time. And that is why I'm calling this wellness dividends because most of the changes we make are not immediate. There are more changes for the long term. So also ask yourself, what did you do before to adversely affect your health in a bad way? Were there some habits that you had adopted over a period of time and that maybe made you ill? So give this some thought. And this is important. So when we look at wellness dividends, we know that these are benefits to our health in the long term. It's not, we're not going to see immediate 
impact. Um, but we're going to see changes in the long run. And, and why is this important? Well, this is important because, you know, as people age, they start to manifest various illnesses. And a lot of the times, those illnesses, um, majority of the times, those illnesses um, cannot be reversed. So it's now a question of um, managing those chronic diseases um, for what they are. So what we call chronic disease management. But is there a way that some of these, these diseases could have been prevented? Yes, it's very possible, especially when we talk about the metabolic diseases, diseases that we can actually, to some extent, control because of our lifestyle decisions. So why is this important? This is important because as we get older, you know, most people have spent their lifetime working and as they get older, they want to spend quality time with family. They want to travel. They want to enjoy the fruits of their labor. But instead of doing that, they're battling with some of these conditions that have set in the hypertension, the diabetes, the hyperlipidemia. And these things cause met metabolic um, problems. So cardiovascular disease, cerebrovascular disease, kidney, eyes, nerves, feet problems, and it affects quality of life. And so tackling disease is possible, very much so. We have wonderful medications, new medical technology coming up, new medications coming up, certainly we can treat disease much better. Disease that is found quicker can be treated quicker. Um, disease that is found too late, especially when organ damage has set in, it becomes a battle, you know, for the person with that disease. They're in and out of the hospital. They don't have that quality of life that they thought they would have when they retire. Um, they're going to travel the world. They're going to do so many things. And it affects the quality of life overall. Tackling disease is possible. Prevention is better. So let's talk about wellness dividends. Let's talk about limiting salt. So in 2013, the World Health Organization recommended that adults limit their sodium intake to less than 2,000 milligrams per day. That's two grams per day. Now, when you eat on a day-to-day, -day, if you cook your meals at home, which is great, you're not adding salt. But be mindful, there's some things that you'll add into that cooking that contain salt. And then when you're out and about, if you're ordering food from restaurants or you're ordering takeout foods, those foods may have salt or sodium already in them. Now, why are we so bothered about this salt? You know, why are people so bothered about salt and sodium? So sodium has been linked with an increase in blood pressure. And so, and we know that blood pressure elevations is harmful to the blood vessels. Uh, they cause weakness of the blood vessels and they cause aging of the blood vessels. So when the blood pressure is high, the uh, blood vessels, they get older much quicker. Um, they, they are prone to damage. Uh, they are prone to um, clotting. So people who develop hypertension can end up with um, problems in their brain so they can have strokes. Um, they can have um, kidney problems, heart problems, blockages, 
um, stretched arteries or aneurysms because the blood pressure makes the um, blood vessels weaker so they can get stretching of those vessels they can get aneurysms um, they can get um, uh, damage of the circulation to the feet and that can affect their um, sensation and they can get ulcers and you know uh, infections so we know that um, sodium intake needs to be limited because consuming excess sodium just leads to more fluid overload the more sodium you have in your system the more uh, water you're going to retain naturally because um, sodium pulls water um, and you know if you're not hydrating you you're going to be dehydrated and then you end up with um, just weakness of your various organs um, kidneys in particular your heart and so limiting sodium is a step that is easy to take um, a challenge is that many people don't know how to cook and so if they rely on eating out they will have um, more sodium intake in the system and more fluid accumulation and an increase in blood pressure and so limiting salt is one of the few things that we can control you know to some extent but it means being mindful and setting limits for what you can or cannot eat there's just some things that are not particularly healthy uh, especially when people already have existing elevations in blood pressure they're just some things that are not particularly healthy for them to eat and um, that information can be sourced from a nutritionist so they're just some snacks that contain excess salt and by reading food labels you can start to identify those foods that are harmful so we're going to move to the next uh, concept so the next concept again prevention is better so we're going to talk about reducing hyperglycemia and um, hyperglycemia is elevated glucose blood glucose and i call this a sticky situation so where you have a sticky situation you know that that sticky situation is going to cause damage to blood vessels large and small so imagine where you have the small vessels so you have the small vessels in the hands the feet and the eyes in the nerves so those start to develop problems so you know when there's um, loss of blood flow to the nerves um, and loss of blood flow to the eye vessels other complications uh, occur and the blood sugars create that sticky situation in large vessels and that also leads to accelerated aging of these vessels and you know we're having a global epidemic with heart disease in fact today is world heart day and so we're having this global epidemic with heart disease um no no country has been able to tackle the issue of heart disease and um you know heart disease starts to go up in prevalence in people in their 50s and 60s and so when i talk about wellness dividends i'm talking about changes that people can make in their 20s and 30s that will impact their health positively in their 50s and 60s and limit their risk of cardiovascular disease and limit their risk of hyperglycemia so typically um, before a person develops type 2 diabetes they would have had years of um, chronic elevations in blood sugar even though they have not been formally diagnosed with type 2 diabetes they would have had elevations of blood glucose for quite a while and they would have started to have damage 
of the various organs. So we're talking about, you know, heart, kidneys, brain, nerves, eyes, and so, and the vessels. So before a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes is made, that person would have had some level of high blood glucose for a period of time, years, before that diagnosis of diabetes is made. And, and that's why, you know, similarly, when somebody has been formally diagnosed with diabetes, it seems like, okay, everything is happening now. But everything wasn't really happening now. We're looking at a compounding interest, compound interest in kind of a negative way where all those uh, bad parameters, you know, elevations in blood sugar, elevation in um, salt intake, sodium intake, and everything has now compounded to come to this stage where now a person is told that they have diabetes, but then they also have kidney damage and they also have nerve damage in their feet at the same time because the illness was compounding, as I explained earlier on. So we don't want to compound in a negative way, in a bad way. We don't want to compound with sugar in a bad way. We want to modulate that sugar level before it compounds into illness. So this is where this concept of wellness dividends comes in, where we are taking control and making sure that these illnesses do not compound. So tackling disease is possible. Prevention is better. So let's talk about wellness dividends, quit smoking. So smoking, did you know nicotine is highly addictive? So nicotine was first uh, introduced to Europe uh, by All right, so Christopher Columbus introduced nicotine to Europe and um, it became quite popular. Um, the smoking, the chewing of tobacco became, gained um, huge popularity. So it wasn't until the 1950s that concerns started to emerge, basically linking um, nicotine with lung cancer and other diseases. But the issue is nicotine is highly addictive and uh, people respond to it very differently. And um, it's, it's hard to quit smoking. It's, it's very hard. And nicotine is a big risk factor for heart attack, um, strokes, um, vessel aneurysm, when the blood vessels stretch, vascular disease, heart failure, um, atrial fibrillation. So uh, nicotine has got um, just so many harmful components and um, even just smoking um, by itself can increase blood pressure by five to ten points and um, you know smoking is a big challenge like I said for many people and uh, there are medications to help people quit smoking. These include the patches and lozenges. There's some other medications that can reduce um, smoking. 
Smoking also increases the bad cholesterol, which is LDL, and that causes more vessel problems. Uh, smoking also damages the actual inner lining of blood cells, and that is an effect that uh, creates risk for heart attacks. All right, so enough on smoking. Let's go to the next slide. So there's some just one or two pointers, and I don't want to overwhelm you with too much information, but I think this is important, uh, especially as I've gone over what I've defined wellness dividends to be and how we can add to our health in the long run. So looking at our health as a company, looking at yourself as a company, and you are now investing in yourself, better lifestyle decisions because you want to get the dividends later on of having a better quality of life, reduced hospital visits, reduced healthcare costs, so you can use your money for something else. So rather than pay hospital bills, maybe take yourself shopping or go on a nice vacation or spend time with quality time with your family. So looking at yourself as a company, okay, and adding to yourself that value investing, that lifestyle decision into your company yourself so you can get later benefits and dividends that will pay off in the long run in terms of, like I said, your lifestyle, quality of life, reduction of pain and suffering, um, you know, doing what you enjoy and not limiting yourself because, you know, you, you can't go on a trip because you're on dialysis and you need to call ahead and organize dialysis where you're going so you can't go on a cruise and you can't go abroad because of many medications or your your sugar levels are not stable so you can't do the things you enjoy so i'm going just going to give you one or two pointers of course there's so many things that you can do to improve your health and add wellness dividends and sometimes you need a team. It's not something you can do on your own. So you need a team. You may need to find a therapist, a counselor who can help you with behavior change because perhaps all your life you've been doing this this way. And now you have to make these changes for this other way and it's very hard to sustain. And you want to be safe in the way you make your lifestyle decisions. You don't want to make these rapid decisions and end up having adverse effects because you made some changes that were too soon, too rapid, or you made all these changes at once. So I personally believe the most effective changes are changes that people implement over a long period of time. Uh, because I don't believe there's any um, quick, you know, sort of uh, action step that you can take that is sustainable. So whether it comes to dietary choices or lifestyle or exercise decisions, because when you make those decisions, it's, it's too much stress on the body because it's not used to that rapid shift. So basically, implementing changes slowly over a period of time so that they are sustainable. And so one thing to do is um, you can take a cooking class. And there are many cooking classes online. Um, there are cooking courses you can do, which you can audit um, for free. Um, there's a nice one by Coursera, which is you can audit for free. And 
I will put that link in the bio of this video. So if you don't know how to take a cooking class, you can audit that class for free. You don't have to pay. And um, so learning how to prepare meals without the addition of salty spices. This is an art. It takes, it needs discipline. You know, most people like to cook with um, salty spices for the taste. And um, I think it's an acquired taste too, because you, you will get used to not adding salty spices. And you can add other, other spices. You know, I like to add ginger, garlic, onions, black peppers, red peppers, thyme, um, Italian seasoning. Those are my favorites. So once you start to cook without salty spices, um, the food will taste just as delicious. So that's my one tip. Um, my second tip, you know, watching what you buy at the grocery store, because um, if you're hungry, you're going to gravitate towards those fast foods, those foods that contain a lot of refined sugars and uh, those foods will be the ones that are readily available to you when you're hungry. And all you have to do is open your fridge or pantry and you're grabbing those things. Or you've had a stressful day at work and you're looking for comfort food. And when you get home, you find these uh, sweetened meals and you just grab it. So if you know you don't want to eat it, just don't buy it. Now the household has to be on board with whatever it is you're doing. Um, and that can be a hard sell. So, but generally watching what you buy at the grocery store, because once it's in the fridge, it's in your mouth. So what's once it's in the fridge, it's in your mouth. So if you know, you don't want to eat that particular produce item, or it's got a lot of sugar in it, or it's got a lot of salt in it, just don't buy it. And learning to read food labels is a very good skill. Okay. So the third point is smoking cessation. I did talk about the ill effects of nicotine and it is challenging for people to quit smoking and people may need therapy because if they've tried the nicotine replacement therapy or the other medications available for smoking cessation and those are not working, then they need therapy. So in summary, wellness dividends, they add value to your health over a period of time. So a hashtag for this is hashtag wellness dividends. So I just want to say thank you so much for listening. Um, this is health education and not medical advice. If you've liked this video, uh, please share, like, subscribe. And if you have any um, content or comments about this video, you can send an email to healthfornijab at gmail.com. Health for Niger provides health education content to people in the diaspora. And you can find Health for Niger on social media, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and on LinkedIn. Thanks and bye for now.